Senator Skinner, if you could join us, that'd be great. We're going to move on. Tom, are you ready? Yeah. Great. Um, before we formally vote on the draft report, we'll have public comment. Uh, to get in line to comment, please select the raise hand function on Zoom. If you're calling in, you may dial star nine. Please know that this meeting is being recorded and that if you make a public comment, your name or phone number may be displayed as part of the recording. If you'd like to comment, please select the raise hand or dial star nine on your phone now. We'll take a minute to see how many people who want to comment and based on that, we'll see how long each person has to comment. All right, it looks like we have three people who want to make comments. Um, if you could limit your comments to two minutes, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, Crispy, are you want to go first? There she is. Hi. Um, hi, I'm Crispy, a survivor of harm. Welcome, Assembly Member Brian. I'm so glad you are here. Uh, thank you to the committee, the staff, and the panelists for all of the hard work you do to simplify and rationalize criminal law um, and everything else you do. Um, for recommendation number one, establish a state-funded restitution system for crime victims. Please add language to address survivor victim eligibility. This was brought up in the February 23rd, 2022 meeting where panelist Delaney Green, clinical teaching fellow at UC Berkeley Policy Advocacy Clinic, stated, that 80% of people paying restitution were crime survivors who never got paid restitution. If survivors of harm are given restitution at the get-go, we could prevent harm further down the line to, be to benefit public safety. Also, simplify victims' rights language into non-legal jargon translated into many languages and promote and educate victims of their rights to restitution from the state. Please recommit to the committee's previous recommendations to repeal the death penalty, give people serving life without the possibility of parole sentences an opportunity for a parole hearing after, you know, sooner <laughs> in your recommendation, it was about 25 years, but it would be better to be sooner and repeal this three strikes law. And please work on making changes to improve the board of parole hearings disappointingly low grant rately. Grant, low grant rate. Lastly, I would like to uplift the 257 incarcerated people who have died from COVID and the continued quarantines and lockdowns occurring today. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you, Crispy. It's good to see you and hear from you again. Um, I think we agree that there should be no exclusions on uh, the restitution and that we also talked about earlier today about uh, making sure this language is quite clear and, and making some clarifications between restitution and compensation. And as you heard from before, we are going to go revisit our prior recommendations. So thank you for that. Um, Steve Monklet, Monk Monkelt, excuse me if I mispronounce your name. There we go. Thank you. And I can't tell if I'm in the mix yet, but yes, we can hear you. Okay. So I want to join the chorus of congratulations to the staff and committee for the excellent work and, and thoughtful presentations you've made and the recommendations you have. Three brief comments. First on civil compromise, handled quite a few of those. Currently, it's limited to misdemeanor cases where the victim has a remedy that could be addressed by a civil action which means almost entirely financial loss. So it's um, small theft cases, uh, vandalism, things like that. The system works well. The victims are happy with it, much happier than going through the criminal system usually. Uh, and of course, there's a restorative justice component of the defendant did something for them. So I think that could be expanded significantly without any risk to public safety and with the greater satisfaction in the way the system works. With uh, the consent search, proposal, limiting consent searches, um, anecdotal evidence from dash cams and body cams, which have become ubiquitous, suggests that the majority of police officers, when they pull somebody over for a minor traffic violation, usually start the conversation at the driver's window by saying, either, can I search your car? 
or do you have any guns or drugs in the car? Followed up by the question, can I search your car? Um, and, and that's just a bad practice. It's, you know, we, we're supposed to have evidence-based policing. So that's my comment on that. And then on the practical side, if the recommendations for restitution, uh, the actual payment to the victim being moved to the state side, uh, that would relieve the counties of what's a pretty considerable expense trying to collect restitution from indigent defendants. And I, my understanding is that that process results in just about a zero net gain. The county spends almost as much as they collect. Um, if you move that to a state payment and reduce those staff needs on the county, and you also uh, have the court handle the bail issue instead of a bail bondsman, um, the savings from one end is going to be uh, applied to the other end. So that I think if the, both those things happen, um, even if the county's handling some money, that's not going to really involve much more cost than they're currently doing in the chase after indigent. That's, you know, that's, cer that's certainly the plan. Thank you, first of all. And uh, that's certainly the intent. I mean, we try to try to make recommendations that are realistic and keeping budget in mind, but also make sure that they're the most um, efficient and effective in terms of uh, public safety and maintaining the rights, uh, getting back to what Justice Cuellar had, was saying uh, earlier. So it is a balancing act. And uh, well, thank you for your comments. Um, Deborah? Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Good morning. Thank you for your time. Um, I'd like to point out with regard to the report itself at Section 7 related to modernizing the competency to stand trial system. Um, I totally support this. I would point out that the relevant statute should consider 1370.1, which relates to individuals with developmental disabilities. I know that footnote 194 um, specifically goes into the issues of developmental disability. But again, um, as I think I, I commented before, I don't think that there is enough data on the issue of developmental disability. If you look at Bureau of Justice Statistics, it shows that far more people in the criminal justice system are found to have a cognitive disability. And I don't think at any point in the introductory part of a case, um, is the issue of, of disability or mental health properly considered? Um, this is a function, I think, of what you've also identified as the issue of people not having access to counsel in the beginning. Um, but I know personally that people are being denied accommodations and therefore the voice to express the fact that they have disability. And that this is one of the issues that I think Assembly Member Brian has raised with regard to the issue of poverty and race. Um, I think disability needs to be considered. When you look at Penal Code 1170.45, which is where uh, race and ethnicity is reported through judicial counsel reporting, they also consider gender, but they do not consider disability. They do not consider mental health. And I think these are issues that really need to be considered, especially for access to the system and the issue of due process. Um, I, I think that what happens if disability is not considered as is that these people are disappeared. I would submit that the footnote 194 undercounts the number of people who have developmental disability or these issues in the criminal justice system. And as a result, they are voiceless. Um, I, I, I'm going to write up more of my thoughts because I think it makes more sense in a big picture. Yes, that would, that would, sorry to cut you off, but I'm just trying to make sure that we have time for everybody. I, it would, sure. as, as always, especially if you're making references to specific reports or specific you know, footnotes in our report, we, we appreciate the close read. But if you would send emails to uh, staff, that would be very helpful. And I think to your broader point about making sure the developmental disability doesn't get lost in the mix, especially with mental health, which sometimes gets conflated. And um, I think it's something that we should definitely keep our eye on. So thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you all for what you're doing. Terrific. Yolanda? Hello, everybody. Um, I just want to say thank you so very much for everything that you guys are doing. Welcome, Assemblyman um, Brian. It's a pleasure to see you on the panel. 
Um, I know some more great work is going to happen because you're part of the group. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for the Second Look Act and um, for LWAP. That's what my husband's case is. He's going to be 29 years in March. Um, I also wanted to um, find out when is that going to take effect? And thank you so much. Oh, I think that you're referring to the Second Look Act that I referred to in Washington, D.C. Um, I think it takes, I'm not sure it's the bottom line, but we don't have it here in California, unfortunately, but it was one of our recommendations from pri prior years. Um, can we, so, re can we re-recommend that please? Well, it, yes. I mean, I think that that was Senator Skinner's uh, suggestion is that we revisit all of our prior recommendations to see how they might be um, updated or uh, made more uh, appropriate for the legislature in years to come. So I think that is something that we'll definitely revisit. Happy holidays to you. Um, the next person that we have is under the name California Coalition for Women Prisoners. Hi, can you all hear me? Yes. Great. Hi, welcome. Um, I, I didn't mean to speak today. I was in listening mode. I haven't tuned into one of these for a while, but um, and I guess my organization's name is stuck on the Zoom. So I work with the California Coalition for Women Prisoners and um, we are part of two coalitions which are relevant to the discussions today, which is the coalition to drop LWAP and end life without parole sentencing, and also the Care First California Coalition, which is really focused in on pretrial justice. And so I just want to echo appreciation for the work that you all are doing and um, Senator Skinner's comment about, you know, can we really wait a generation? I know the work we do is spanning generations, but when it comes to the destabilizing impacts on all of our communities when it comes to pre-child detention here in Sacramento County, where I'm based, um, almost 85% of people languishing in our jails are pre-trial and there is just an urgency. And I think we can go further to preserve the presumption of innocence and do so without jeopardizing public safety in any way. So look forward to just pushing the envelope in that realm. And yes, please, um, go back and double down on the recommendation for the 10 year review. And I, I also did think maybe it was more like 20 or 25, but would it really advocate for the shorter time frame of 10 years. And thank you for uplifting the case of Miss Jamesetta Guy and Judge Klein and that whole story. And just so many people who are marginalized because of the intersections of their identities, survivors of domestic violence, um, like my aunt who recently came home from an extreme sentence, um, youth, you know, the United States has 80% of the world's um, LWAP population, and California is one of five states really driving that factor. We have 37% of youth in all of the U.S. serving LWAP are here in California, even with all the reforms and progress we've made thus far. So just thank you for all of your work. I hope we can take pre-trial further, and I really hope we can revisit um, reviews for people serving extreme sentences. The recidivism rate when these folks come home too is nearly 0%. I'm proud to work with many of them who are happy to be home and actually contributing to their communities after so much time away. So thank you. Thank, thank you. I apologize for my uh, dog here. He's some background noise. Um, and I also want to say that as you you may have heard that for next uh, next year, we expect to focus on at least one of our sessions on families and women behind bars. So I'm sure we'll be in touch with you. So thank you for your um, your work. Um, and then finally, uh, Jane Coran. Jane, I think you're on mute. Jane, we can't hear you. So sorry. Um, I uh, right. have. Uh, can you hear me now? There we go. Yes. Yes, I'm sorry. There's no power in my house. I'm on my phone, and so it's a little tricky. Uh, thank you. Yes, I'm. I'm going to echo any uh, the, the comments that are made. Uh, I also work with. Uh, the Coalition for Women Prisoners and the Drop LWAC Coalition. So I urge you to follow Washington, D.C.'s example. And Mike, you said it's just a city as a 15-year resident there. Um, <laughs> I beg to differ. <laughs> There's a lot going on in Washington, D.C. I, I was alluding to our earlier conversation that we were trying to compare to other large states. But yes, I, I agree. I agree. Yeah, but 
uh, is a colony. It's still a colony. Um, so uh, I, I want to uh, reiterate uh, on second look because we have had some changes, as I'm sure you are aware, in the penal code. Um, the resentencing process, 1170, has been rewritten, and it does allow now for people with um, LWAP uh, to be in, in a group that could be considered. There is a difference of opinion uh, between CDCR and, um, and in practice, we have not seen it yet. But I do wish that uh, we could look back at that. Um, we also, uh, this, this year, so much good stuff was passed. And I thank this committee for uh, recommending so many of the, the, um, the reforms that have taken place in the last two years. But, um, you know, considering um, the background of a survivor, because as we know, um, in, our, in our prisons, and especially in our women's prisons, um, the majority, the great majority of folks um, who are, are uh, sentenced to these kinds of draconian uh, sentences um, have, have that kind of background and are, in fact, survivors of violence. So uh, I hope that uh, you're going to follow through on uh, your, your, your attention being focused on women and your attention being focused on the need for second look, resentencing. Um, in the meantime, if you have direct contact with the governor, we need more commutations, <laughs> please. Anyone who's got his ear, um, we, we need that to happen. Finally, I wanna close with uh, my uh, cheers that uh, Assembly Member Brian, who I heard speak at Initiate Justice and who's, who's uh, career I've followed um, in recent years, so appreciate it. So appreciate that he's been chosen. Uh, as we see today, he's, he's a vital member of, of this group. So thanks again, bye. Thank you and happy holidays. Um, I second uh, um, the welcoming for Assembly Member Brian. We have a lot of people out there supporting you, but we also have, a, um, as you'll get to know that some of the commenters that you heard from today are regular, regularly appear here and we really do appreciate their contribution. And as always, if you have some more substantive uh, recommendations or suggestions for the committee, um, really the best way to do that is in writing by email. Um, but of course, we welcome the public comment here. We're now at the point of the final deliberations for our 2022 report that we discussed earlier. I'm not going to rehash each of the 10 recommendations and suggestions that we made at this time, but instead ask if there are any final modifications that committee members would like to make on the report after hearing from public comment. All right. With that said, can I have a motion and second to adopt the final draft of the report subject to our discussion earlier, including the prerogative that I have as chair to make non-substantive changes, approve design and execute its publication. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right. It's an end of another great year. I'm very happy that we're able to come to a unanimous decision as as usual. This is the I I just hope we can take just a moment to pause and reflect on how much work we've gotten through since uh, this past January. It's really tremendous. Um, obviously, we could not do it without the staff. So thank you all, Rick, Joy, Tom, Brian, Laura. Um, Natasha, there's so many people here. I think that the recommendations are really uh, substantial and significant. I hope the legislature will take it up. We are already working with some lawmakers on that. We'll of course keep you posted. Um, everybody have a very, I hope you had a good Thanksgiving and you have a good holiday. If you have any reason to reach out to me or staff, please never hesitate. Um, we plan to have the report published um, by mid-December. I will keep you posted on that. Our next meeting time will be sometime in February or March. Staff will be in touch about scheduling. Um, and just thank you all for your um, dedication, commitment to this committee and continued support. So thank you all and happy holidays. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. All right, with that said, we are, we are adjourned. Have a good afternoon.